No matter how dark things seem to be Jeremiah 33.3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Join us now to hear great and mighty things that have happened in the lives of people who have been changed through our Lord Jesus as they share their testimonies of how God answers prayer. Welcome to God Answers Prayer. I'm Linda Cobb, and I'm your host today. And uh, we are blessed each and every day Every day, if you will just concentrate on your day and just keep your eyes open and your ears attentive, you will see that God is continually answering prayers in your life. And uh, so we will be sharing more about how God is answering prayer. I have a scripture that's found in the book of Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 and 17. And it says, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Today on God Answers Prayer, we have Greg Zanetti, owner of Zanetti Financial, and Greg is from Albuquerque, New Mexico. He's going to be telling us about how he came to know the Lord his education and his career and how he became a brigadier general and worked managing assets for Bill Gates. He will also be explaining to us what digital currencies are and their connection to the Bible. He will, he will be telling us about what's going on in the financial world and the connection between Wall Street and the Holy Scriptures. So hopefully that has caught you somewhere in there. There's several hooks in there. And uh, we're going to be back with more and with Greg Zanetti right after this. Hey Sun Broadcasting, I'm Ben Corson of Hope Generation, and you guys have been broadcasting for over 44 years programs just like mine in order to spread the good news of the God of hope to the world. We are so thankful for your prayers, and we're so grateful for your financial support to continue to advance the forward march and progress of the kingdom of God into our generation. We love you, Sun Broadcasting, and the best is in front of us. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the creator of the universe, our savior, redeemer, protector, provider, and healer is in control. We are living in a time right now when we can shout from the rooftops that everything happening in the world today is not a surprise to our God. The Almighty holds us in the palm of his hand and we are able to walk through this valley and find ourselves still able to praise the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, for His righteousness. It is our choice on how we walk and what witness we are silently giving others. Are we choosing to rejoice and walk in faith, or are we living in fear and uncertainty? If you need someone to stand with you in prayer and faith during the days ahead, our prayer partner team is here to pray with you. Our prayer line is 505-345-4165. We will connect you with a prayer partner. Well, we want to welcome Greg Zanetti to God Answers Prayer. It's good to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank I've, you for I've having me. I've looked forward to this after meeting you and talking to you a little bit. And I thought, oh, people need to hear your story. I mean, you, you're talking all the time about finances right. and financial things, but it's also important for people to know who the man is uh, and who who the the king of the heavens is in him, yeah, well, yeah. amen. Because <laughs> you've got a, you've got a resume that is very very long. You're a retired general. You're a fi financial advisor, and uh, you own Zanetti Financial. Right. Um, but tell us a, tell us about Greg. I mean, growing up, and how did you come to the Lord? 
Well, I grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay. I went to Valley High School, so go, go Vikings. <laughs> I was raised Catholic, and actually I learned a lot from the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it until later, but there was a point where we started going to non-denominational Christian mm -hmm. to, and went to Calvary Chapel and Skip Heitzig and that amazing ministry over there. You know, we were led to the Lord and then we made a transition. Uh, we got involved in a, this is a long, long story, too much for your audience, but via a contact in Ecuador, mm. we found out a little bit about the Messianic community mm -hmm. and this merger of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Everything about Jesus or right. Yeshua mm -hmm. was, it was all right there from the very beginning. Right. And so starting to see him through, I'll say Hebrew wise, mm -hmm and that culture and how it worked, he just became so much bigger to both my wife and me. And it, we, we love what all these experiences were previous, but this has been something else. We're learning Hebrew now, Great. and even learning the words. It's stunning how much points to Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. This yeah. is what it's all about. So. Anyway, it's been a, yeah. a wonderful journey. Well, it's, it's wonderful. I, I tell people a lot of times, it's like, okay, my first experience, I got saved. I thought that was everything. Right. And then I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I thought, oh, my gosh, right. this is it. Right. And then, as I told the lady that wrote, Who is Israel, uh, Batya Wooten, and I read her book, and, and I went through and made sure every scripture was right on that she was quoting. And only to discover that I had little question marks beside them in my Bible through the years. And so I finally got to meet her at a National Religious Broadcasters Convention. And I, I told her that, that I, you know, all these things were so wonderful. And I right. said, but then, I said, she said, you crossed the river. I, you crossed over. I said, I did. I became a Hebrew which that's right. Hebrew means to cross over. Right. And I right. said, yes. And I said, so all of those experiences have brought me to where I am today. Right. And it's awesome. So and, Right. There's no, I guess if you're born into it, you could go right to it. But if you're not, it is this, this yeah, journey. Exactly. And, yeah, exactly. It's so rich because there's so much more to be understood. Uh, and the depth that the Hebrew <gasps> brings to us is incredible. Stunning, right. Yeah. Wonderful. No, that's great. We serve an amazing God. So. <laughs> we do. We do. So um, you you are a retired general. You were a bri brigadier general here in the state. I was. Uh, so I went from Valley High School to West Point. Uh -huh. I graduated from there in 1980, served on active duty, and learned that the Army was very kind to me. They, uh, they sent me off to get my master's degree in business from Boston University. And then I was getting out of the service, and the Army said, you know, Zanetti, you can get out, but you owe us a few years. Mm. So if you'll serve in the National Guard or the Reserves for, I forget what it was, two years or four years, we'll call it even. And so I did. And Linda, I loved it. I just loved the citizen-soldier thing, the whole idea of, you know, g going when your neighbors needed you. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I started working for an outfit called E.F. Hutton. It was a big brokerage firm mm -hmm. back in the day. And so I had two careers. I started managing money. And then on the weekends, I put on my uniform and I, I went and served. I made rank over in the National Guard. And I was very blessed. I, I made general, mostly because I had wonderful troops who bailed me out over and over <laughs> again. <laughs> and at that point, I got deployed. Mm. So I became deputy commander at Guantanamo Bay. And our brigade went for that mission. That required me to sell my business. Mm. Well. I raised my right hand, you know, yeah, voluntarily, there, there you and as part of it. And so I left, and it was another actually great blessing of my life. I got to see the bureaucracy, the army, the media. This mm -hmm. was at a time when President, well, it wasn't President Obama yet. He was candidate Obama, and he was going to shut the place down, and the media was there every day. And just, just seeing how all that worked, kind of the scales fell from my eyes. Ah, oh, so this is how it really works. It's not the way I thought. And then when I came back, I thought about running for governor. And I was kind of doing the exploratory thing. And I got a call from a friend from high school. His name is Mike Larson. Now he's Michael Larson. He had become, from Valley High School, Bill Gates' money manager. 
the guy. And he said, hey, look, I know you're thinking about doing this governor thing, but we'd like for you to come up here and run some money for Bill. Well, that seemed like a pretty good opportunity. <laughs> and a door opened. Mm -hmm. So we moved up to Seattle and for I don't know, seven, eight years managed money, not just for Mr. Gates, but for uh, a number of wealthy people up in Seattle. And so I get another great blessing. I got to see how big money works. And by the way, a lot of the things that Mr. Gates does, I, I don't really approve much of. But as far as personally, seeing how the money world worked with the way versus what I thought it was when I was here mm -hmm. was very, very helpful. So Teresa and I actually retired and we started kind of traveling the world. And then we came home four years ago and our parents were just getting older. So we decided we needed to come home. And we did, and I was bored out of my mind. And so <laughs> I should. So I opened Zanetti Financial with no minimums. It's whoever God puts in my path. Let's see if we can help them. Let's bring these experiences to bear for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So I changed my whole view on a lot of things. So anyway, started out mostly friends and family. I still feel like it's that. It's friends and family, and I don't know, that's, that's what's going on in my life. Well, I, you are a blessing. I know that, and, and what you've had to share. Um, and, and from the Hebraic understanding in the Bible of unjust weights and measures. <laughs> Classic, <laughs> yes. Here's where we are. We were talking about this at the break. And we're printing money like crazy. And I think what people don't understand is what money is. Uh, money in history has been gold and silver. Uh, it's been uh, furs. Money has been camels or goats or sheep. Mm -hmm. Money is what you and I agree it is. Mm -hmm. If I trade you my pen for you know, your leather thing right there, I guess that's money. That implies trust. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to make a deal. I'll give you something. You give me something back. The two agreeing parties in America today with respect to that are the U.S. government on one hand mm -hmm. and we the people on the other. What does the government agree to do? Uh, they agree to give us a currency that's of value. What do we the people agree to do? Work hard, pay our taxes, add value, be good citizens. As we are printing trillions and trillions of dollars, they are debasing the currency without your permission. Mm -hmm. Well, that's dishonest. Yes. Because as it debases the currency, that debases your work. You haven't agreed to that. And so what do people over here do? And it's kind of natural. You kind of know something's wrong. You know you're getting gamed. So you game the system. You take benefits you shouldn't. Maybe you cheat on your taxes. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, you do things you shouldn't do. And the government gets mad at you. So the government distrusts you. You distrust the government. And trust spirals down. Mm -hmm. That's unjust weights and measures. And it's a warning over and over again in Scripture, in Leviticus, in Numbers, in, in Proverbs. In Psalms. It's everywhere. Don't do this. And who we are, who our government is, then it will show up in our money. And I, I, I tell this story when I was in the military. A, a lot of the people out there have had a clearance. And if you do, every once in a while, some fellows will come into your office and say, sir, can we talk to you? Sure. And they go through this whole thing to update your clearance. Do you gamble? Do you drink too much? Are you using drugs? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, you say to these guys, guys, if I did these things and I told you that I was using cocaine, you're going to pull my clearance, right? Well, yeah, sir. <laughs> Well, then basically my incentive is to lie to you because I don't want you to pull my clothes. Oh, yeah, we know that. Well, <laughs> what are we doing this for? There's got to be a better way. Oh, there is, sir. Let us see your checkbook. Let us see your credit card statements. And in about five, ten minutes, we'll profile you. We'll know right away. Are you putting money away in a retirement account? Or are you going to the casino? Are you buying shoes for your kids or funding college for your kids? Or are you spending this much at the liquor store? I said, we'll know you right away. 
And I think that's true. It, it's the one part of scripture where God says, challenge me. And you know where it is. It's in Malachi. And he said, and God doesn't say challenge me on, um, oh, on praying or fasting or being nice. It's money. He says, give. That's money. He said, watch what I'll do if you'll give. Mm-hmm. And I always think, who am I to challenge you? But he chose that one thing, and it had to do with money. Because he knows who we are will show up in our money. It's the same for governments. What are we doing with the money? How are we treating it? Are we being fair with our citizens? Are we being fair with our neighbors, our allies, and so on? So uh, I would say right now that we're out of step with Scripture. And because we're out of step with Scripture, there will be consequences. And as these consequences manifest, it might be natural for us to say, Lord, why are you doing this to us? It has nothing to do with that. <laughs> Look, I, I told you what to do. Mm-hmm. You're disobeying. There will be consequences, but not from me. It, it's from your own behavior. Right. And with that, I'm talking too much. So No, it, it's, <laughs> it's good. And, and I think you know, those, those questions are arising. I mean, when we look at current events right. and, and what's going on in our nation, you, I mean, it's obvious things are totally out of whack. Right. You know, so where do we point the finger? And, and how do we know, you know, um, I mean, because well, what we're seeing is, no, yikes, the blame it's game. just scary. No, you're right. I mean, Pelosi blames Trump. Trump blames mm-hmm. the Chinese. The Chinese blame the, I mean, it's this kind of thing. Uh-huh. But you know this, and I can say this on your show. Foundationally, we have a, a spiritual problem. Yes, yes. And sometimes I, I, wish, I wish I could remember the pastor whom I heard this message from, but he talked about something called the wrath of abandonment. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of this? No, kind of. Uh, there are different kinds of wrath in Scripture. Mm-hmm. So there was the part where God got angry with the whole world, yes. and that's with Noah. What, eight people live? I was pretty angry. But, but then there's a wrath against a small group, Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm-hmm. You know, very focused, this group at this time. I don't think the people in China knew anything about what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Sometimes the wrath could be against the Israelites. Look, you knuckleheads. I told you this, you did that, but there's going to be a consequence. But there's one that's more subtle, and it shows up in Kings and Chronicles a lot. And it's called the wrath of abandonment. Mm -hmm. And it's when a society says, Lord, we don't need you. We got this. We don't want you in the public square. We don't want you in our courts. We don't want you in our schools. We don't want you in the military, certainly not in politics. We're good. I believe he'll honor our will. Fine. You guys want me out? I'm out. And when he leaves, We've abandoned him, but we'll always say he left us, but you know how that works. When he leaves, love leaves. Mm -hmm. Compassion Mm -hmm. leaves. Mm -hmm. Reason leaves. Unity leaves. And it's not a vacuum. Something comes in afterwards. And this is what we're seeing right now, in, in my opinion. We're not acting in a reasonable way. There isn't unity. We talk about love, but but it's not and compassion and empathy, where is all this going? We're turning cold. If we started there and we said, we're sorry, we, we want to come back, he's very forgiving, mm-hmm. all merciful. <laughs> he's seen it before. Yeah, we'll come he back. Has. But until we do that, I do fear that we're going to continue down this path until finally we reach a point, and it will be exhaustion for us. Everything else will have failed, and then we'll finally say, we're sorry. I just wish we didn't have to go down that path. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the good news is a lot of people are waking up, and I, I pray that you out there watching today are going to wake up to what's going on because God gave us his commandments because he loves us. Right. And he wants us to be able to not only connect with him, but to connect with one another. Uh, he wants a family, he wants fellowship. And so this, the, he gave us the parameters that we can walk in in order to have favor and to have life and have it more abundantly. 
Uh, we've got a prayer line. Just want to let you know, if you have a need today, please give us a call, 505-345-4165. And we have prayer partners that will pray the Word of God with you. We'll be right back with Greg Zanetti after this. Are you feeling lost and alone? Maybe you're feeling closed off from the world right now. Do you live with little hope? Our prayer partners are here with a word of encouragement and to lift you and your needs up before the Lord. Please reach out today by calling 505-345-4165. We care about you. Call 505-345-4165. Well, we're back with Greg Zanetti. And uh, Greg, you just said something. It was interesting. I mean, about the trillions of dollars of debt that this nation has accrued. And about, I mean, the fact that we can't, we cannot comprehend trillion. No, no. And, and in fact, people, they've proven this. Researchers have proven it. In the Bible, you'll never go past a million. And we can barely comprehend that big number. But after a million, the Bible goes to, it's like, the stars of the sky, the sands of the sea, we can relate to that. Yeah. But now we're living in a world where we have $27 trillion of debt in the United States. That's probably a low number, Linda. We're probably higher than that, and we just we have some money off the books. Globally, and it's a global problem, we have $300 trillion, well, just shy of that, of debt. Now, to put this in perspective, the world economy this year will probably come in around 80 trillion. Last year it was 87. I'm knocking a little bit off because of COVID. This would be like you making $80,000 a year, which is pretty good money in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. But what if you owe 300,000 on your credit card? True. Yeah. Can you make it? Mm. But what if the credit card company came to you and said, Linda, you're a nice lady. You've always paid your bills and you're making a good salary. We know eventually you'll be good for it. We're going to drop your credit card interest rate to zero. Oh, then I can spend more. You can spend more. <laughs> you don't have to make a monthly payment, not even the interest. Oh, yeah. and next month, don't make a monthly payment. Next month, don't make a monthly payment. Linda, this is where we've gotten to. Mm -hmm. The world has, everyone's dropped interest rates to zero or near zero because we can't even afford the interest on the debt. How often in scripture have we been warned about debt? Warned over and over mm -hmm. again. Don't, don't get into this situation where you've piled it up, piled it up, and we embraced something that was very unscriptural. And the result is we are going to have to erase debt. It's history. The Bible actually has a mechanism to erase debt right. called Jubilee. Mm -hmm. Now, typically you did it voluntarily. <laughs> it wasn't forced on you, and we have not followed the rules of Jubilee. But we are, we are hitting the point now. People say, when, will it, when is this going to happen? And I say, Guys, it's happening now. We are hitting the wall. Zero percent interest rates are the tell that we're in trouble so what are you hearing out of, and I'll pick on both sides. Let's start with the Democrats. Let's forgive student loan debt, mm -hmm. $1.6 trillion. And I get it, the kids are having a hard time repaying this thing. Jubilee, they don't have to pay. That's fine, except someone loaned that 1.6 trill, they're basically defaulted on. Now let's go to the other side, uh, the Republicans. The Chinese sent us COVID. They own one trillion of our debt. Don't pay them back. They owe us that. Well, fine. I mean, you can do that. I get it. Wars start over this kind of thing, so be careful. Right. But that would be a default. But this is how we're going to deal with these debt problems. There is going to be a system of defaulting. One is the very blunt instrument I just said, just don't pay people back. Most governments don't want to employ the blunt instrument. So what's next? Print $300 trillion, euros, yen, <laughs> I mean, just pesos. Governments have this power. Mm -hmm. Linda, we're doing it right now. We are printing trillions. In March alone, we printed six trillion, and now they're debating it right now. Well, what's the stimulus package going to be? Well, one and a half trillion, two trillion, maybe three trillion. Okay, fellas, gals, where are we getting this? 
and we're conjuring it up out of thin air. Right. What will that do to the value of your currency? Mm -hmm. Now we're back to unjust weights and measures. What happens to prices? Yeah. Well, when was the last time you went to the grocery store and you oh, looked yeah. at the price of ground beef? Did the ground beef improve and that's why they can charge the higher price? No. <laughs> or is it the value of your currency is going down? I have clients who are contractors. They say, Greg, the cost of sticks. Sticks. Two by fours. <laughs> Two by fours are sticks. Who knew? He said, they've doubled this year. And they're right. You, you can go and look at the lumber indexes and go, wow, look at that. Copper prices, same thing. Copper is not improving. Copper is copper. It's just you're seeing the rising prices. Mm -hmm. And it's not, actually, it's not even that the prices are rising. It's your currency is falling. Right. And this is step two in paying off debt. Besides defaults, you inflate and devalue. And there's a third way, and that is you can revalue gold. Now, is it, yeah, that's the look. <laughs> Everybody always, as soon as you say the word gold, I mean, people's ears perk up. In scripture, where does gold first appear in the Bible? Hmm. That's not fair to do quizzes. <laughs> it's on the first page and a half. Okay. Gold appears before Eve shows up. This is when my wife hits me in the arm or whatever. <laughs> but it does. And gold weaves its way all through Scripture up to the very end. It, the Antichrist says, why have you come to take our land, our cattle, our gold, our silver? So what, we have valued it forever. Now, with that said... Gold is a shiny yellow metal. It doesn't move a truck or a train. You can't eat it. It doesn't earn interest. Uh, Warren Buffett, the rich guy, mm -hmm. he calls gold a pet rock. <laughs> and he's actually right. There is not much use to gold. Used in industry a little, used in technology, trace amounts. But for the most part, gold is useless. But Gold can be used to erase debts. And here's how it works. The last person who did this was from a first world country, and it wasn't that long ago. It was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And here's what he did. He had a problem. It was 1934. The nation was slipping deeper into, into depression. Right. Tax revenues were falling. Sound familiar? Mm-hmm. Debts were soaring for FDR. That was a problem. Sound familiar? But FDR had gold. So here's what he did. In 1933, he made ownership of gold illegal. He closed all the banks in what he called a banking holiday. So if we think spin is new today, yeah. no, 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 it's been going on forever. During the holiday, he opened everybody's safety deposit box. T men treasury officials. They called them T-men back there, back then. Great name. Went into everybody's safety deposit box. If you had 10 gold coins in your safety deposit box, they took those 10 gold coins out and they gave you 10 $20 bills because that was the going price for gold. They closed the safety deposit boxes, reopened the banks, and people said, where's my gold? And the government said, we didn't steal it. We paid you market price. We're good. And we were a much more trusting nation back then. The next year, 1934, he changed the price of gold. He decreed, he didn't even go to Congress. He said, gold is not $20 an ounce. Gold is $35 an ounce. Now, why did he do this? I want you to imagine scales. On one side of the scale, you have gold. On the other side of the scale, you have debt. When he changed the price of gold to 35, it's like he made gold heavier. <laughs> that made the debt lighter. Effectively, with a stroke of a pen, he erased about 70% of the government's debt. This helped no farmer, right. no business owner, no homeowner, nobody out there. But it helped government so that Roosevelt could do his New Deal programs. This is how he got the cushion. He merely changed the price of gold and he raised 70% of the government's debt. Why can you do this with gold and nothing else? It's because gold is a pet rock. 
imagine if he had changed the price of oil from 20 to 35, almost doubling the price in the Depression. What would people have said? Are you out of your mind? You just doubled the price of gas when we're in soup lines and food banks and this kind of thing. Oil ripples. He couldn't change the price of oil. What if he changed the price of copper? Copper's in everything. It would have rippled. Anything with a use, aluminum, coal, natural gas, would have rippled. Then when he changed the price of gold, he changed the price of wedding bands. That was it. And erased government debt. So what's coming? Some of your viewers may have heard the term the Great Reset, the mm -hmm. global currency reset. There's right. a reset coming. Part of the reset process will be not just in the United States, but across the globe to start over and erase these debts. And they have to. They have to because we violated God's laws. We have indebted the young kids with almost 300 trillion of debt. Totally unfair. Mm -hmm. And they can't haul it. This isn't a Democrat, Republican, Chinese, American problem. We now have a mathematics problem. And a sin problem. And a, right. <laughs> so what are we going to do? Yeah. They have told us, and the they is the International Monetary Fund, Bank for International Settlements. If you listen to central bankers, they're telling you, we're going to default on some of the debts. We're going to inflate and devalue. We're going to print, and we're going to revalue gold. Got it. So as an investor, you have to start thinking differently. What you think is stable may not be so. What you think the dollar will always be a dollar that isn't necessarily true. So you have to start rethinking how you view the world. And this is what I believe is coming. And again, I'm talking too much. So <laughs> your turn. No, this is, this, is, uh, this is good information because, uh, you know, we're talking about gold, silver, paper money. What about the digital currencies? <laughs> I mean, you know, they're all in the news all the time. People are investing. Uh, some of them have gone bust. Other people are going, oh, no, this is the thing of the future. All right. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Part of the reset will likely be a digital currency. What you see now with Bitcoin or Ethereum or Litecoin or Ripple, these are all private digital currencies, and they're all decentralized. The prices are soaring right now. Now, it's been all over the map. You know, I remember three years ago, Bitcoin had gone from not, nothing to 19,000. And then everybody got excited. And then it got slammed down to 3,000, mm -hmm. back to 13,000, 6,000. Now we're back over 20,000. Wow. It's pretty hard to have a currency that rockets around like that and have any stability to it. But the thinking is kind of there. If I can't trust these governments who print money like water, there's a fixed number of Bitcoin. It's decentralized. It's free men and free women agreeing to trade goods and services based on Bitcoin. The idea of it's pretty clever. With all that said, if anybody believes the governments of the world will allow the coin of the realm to be a private, decentralized currency? <laughs> you probably have rocks in your head. You're not thinking clearly. China has already outlawed it. If you're using Bitcoin, they say you're a drug dealer or a terrorist, and you're trying to hide something. The governments of the world could shut down the cryptocurrencies overnight, and a lot of people would be very upset. So while they're talking that way, there are two bills in the Senate that your viewers may want to look at. One is called the Banking for All Act, and the other is the Illicit Cash Act. And these two have been kind of working their way through since 2018, picked up steam in 2019, and even during COVID, they're moving mm -hmm. ahead. The end result, in part, will be FedCoin, the Federal Reserve. Our central bank, in conjunction with our treasury, of course, issuing a digital currency. 
Now, people say, well, you know, digital currency, we, we have that already. I get paid with digits when I get paid by the government or, my, you know, they just hits my bank and what's the big deal? Fed coin's totally different. A Fed coin is a programmable coin. So let's say this. I've got my, my cell phone here. Linda, the Federal Reserve says, Linda, tell you what, if you'll download the Fed coin app, mm -hmm. now think of the young people. Yeah. How long will it take them to download an app? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 10 seconds? We will deposit 1,500 Fed coin into your phone right now, and you can use the Fed coin to go out to dinner, pay your taxes, pay your rent. Here, free money. It bypasses the banks goes directly from the Fed or the Treasury right to you. How many kids do you think will do that? A lot of them, and they don't realize that it is a violation of their rights. Oh, it's, it's staggering what happens with this thing. It's a programmable coin. So the minute you get it, when you spend it, they'll know how you spent it. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not the same for cash right now. If you get digital money put in your account at the bank and you go make a withdrawal of a thousand bucks and you go to the dry cleaner, you go out to eat, they don't right. really know how that goes. This, they'll be able to track it. You spend it at the restaurant, the restaurant uh, owner spends it at the dry cleaner, dry cleaner at the gas station, gas station. They will know from the very onset all the way through where this coin went in your spending patterns. Mm -hmm. Not only that, because it's programmable and they, if they wanted to enforce COVID regulations, they could make your Fed coin only usable within five miles of your house. If you go outside the geographical limit mm -hmm. and they know it, it evaporates. When you come back in, it reappears. Let's say you're politically incorrect, Linda. Mm -hmm. I'm politically correct, Greg. <laughs> and we each own a coffee shop. They could make Fed coin usable at my shop, not usable at your shop. Now, here's the part where they can pay off debts. The issue that banks have had and the Federal Reserve has had with all this money printing, even though prices are rising, it's not going fast enough for them. And the reason is this. You can print all the money in the world, but if it's not in motion, if it's not moving, you just have a big old pile of money. You got to get money moving. With a programmable Fed coin, they could put a time limit on it. You're getting 1,500 Fed coin. Linda, you got to use it this month. Use it or lose it. If you don't use it by the 30th, it evaporates. What would you do then? You'd immediately be going out mm -hmm. to spend your, your Fed coin. Now, every restaurant, every Home Depot, every grocery store is going to know you have to spend the money. So what are they going to do? Hike the price of a taco two dollars. I mean, what does it matter to you? You know, you're getting it free anyway. What difference does it you know what it costs? Now they spark the inflation they want. This is how you're able to pay off debt with inflated currencies. Mm. And they're able to track you, control you, your geography, how it's spent. Not mm -hmm. only that, for institutions, they could push Fed coin down to Bank of America. Let's just say they push eight billion down. And they say, okay, B of A, you've got eight billion Fed coin to loan out. But this tranche of two billion has to be for new Green Deal loans to people. <laughs> and, and to be fair, uh, and this tranche of two billion can be used only for fracking. And this two billion can go to this neighborhood, but not the, that neighborhood, mm -hmm. this state, but not that state. Can you see the measure of control? Mm -hmm that they could have via FedCoin. This is all part of the reset. Yeah. And again, people think, Greg, this is woo-woo. Please stop. No, it's, 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 don't, it's, right. It's redistribution. Right. If you don't believe me, go to govinfo.gov. There's a search bar. Uh, type in digital wallet. You'll see the Banking for All Act. You'll see the List Cash Act. Read them. Mm -hmm. it, it, this isn't Be informed. right. It, it, it's right there. Or you could uh, just go to Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever and type in um, the Great Reset, Global Currency Reset, mm -hmm. Financial Reset. Mm -hmm. 
it'll populate. And you gotta go, wow. So at the very beginning of this, you kind of led in with the revelation scripture. Mm -hmm. You yes. won't be able to buy, sell, or trade. Mm -hmm. 10 years ago, I couldn't figure out how that was going to happen. Yeah. It made no sense to me. I thought, no, there will always be a black market. There will always be a way to skirt the system. Now I'm starting to be able to see it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it'll get down to if somebody reports you for not wearing a mask, then it goes on your record and you won't be able to leave the country, to leave your home. Sure. I mean, it's, 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 it's total control. And, and, of course, then they use people against one another. Right. To, to be able to enforce it. Well, I, you know, we're coming up to a break, and I want to <laughs> do this, but stay tuned. And you know what? I mean, this is scary in a lot of ways, I know. But on the other hand, there's good news in the midst of it. And so we want you to know what the good news is and maybe a little bit about what can you do? How do, how do you handle this as a believer in today's world? We'll be right back after this. Are you feeling lost and alone? Maybe you're feeling closed off from the world right now. Do you live with little hope? Our prayer partners are here with a word of encouragement and to lift you and your needs up before the Lord. Please reach out today by calling 505-345-4165. We care about you. Call 505-345-4165. Hey Sun Broadcasting, I'm Ben Corson of Hope Generation, and you guys have been broadcasting for over 44 years programs just like mine in order to spread the good news of the God of hope to the world. We are so thankful for your prayers, and we're so grateful for your financial support to continue to advance the forward march and progress of the kingdom of God into our generation. We love you, Sun Broadcasting, and the best is in front of us. Dear friend, I, I'm Dr. David Jeremiah, and I'd like to take a moment to speak with you as the world faces the coronavirus pandemic. There is no question we are living in a time of unprecedented uncertainty. It is unlike anything I have experienced in my whole life. And the temptation in times like these is to allow fear and worry to creep into our thoughts and to rob us of our joy. But in these uncertain times, we need to remember that God is still in control. And my prayer for you is that you are healthy, you're in a safe place and surrounded by those you love. Please keep the ministry of Turning Point in your prayers as well. We will continue to bring the healing power of God's word to you each day on radio, television, and online. And I really hope this will be a source of encouragement to you during the current coronavirus. So be safe be in the word, and be in prayer. Well, we're back here with Greg Zanetti, with Zanetti Financial. And uh, Greg, um, I know a lot of people are probably going, oh. <laughs> I know <laughs> what, <the> feeling. <laughs> what do I do? You know, where do I go from here? You know, how can I protect myself? Um, you know, a lot of people have worked very hard and set aside money. Right. I mean, where do they put their money today? Okay. Here's, I can't give blanket financial right, advice, you know right. that, but maybe this will help. I've come to the conclusion there are two kinds of wealth in the world. Rich people don't think in terms of money. Mm -hmm. They think in terms of wealth. And actually there are three kinds. There's spiritual wealth, mm -hmm. which is actually the most important Absolutely. of all. Absolutely. But for this part, let's just, we'll stay in the horizontal. Okay. So there's wealth from the earth. This is the stuff God made. Oil, gas, timber, copper, iron, gold, silver, aluminum, tin, lead, oranges, and soybeans. It's, sometimes I call it low tech. <laughs> the soybean's a soybean. They don't change much. I think the cotton in Egypt 3,000 years ago is probably about the same as the cotton that's today in Egypt 3,000 years later. There's a stability to that. Now, there's another kind of wealth. It's wealth from human hands. It's taking that aluminum and making an airplane. Mm -hmm. Wealth to me. Uh, my car is wealth to me. This has become wealth to me, and my computer. Mm -hmm. Wealth from human hands is a moving target. 150 years ago, wealth from human hands was railroads. Good on those guys. Yeah. Then it was cars and radios. Amazing. 
And then human ingenuity, you know, we get to what the washers and the dryers and dishwashers and micro machine, or microwaves and fax machines. Remember all that stuff mm -hmm. of the 60s, amazing. And now we've, it's computers and cell phones and, and the next stuff is coming. And it's both exciting and terrifying. The artificial intelligence, the micro machinery, the nanotechnology, the quantum computing, don't think we're going back to the Middle Ages. No. That's not going to happen. We're going to have bumps along the way. We're going to have a transition, but coming through on the other side, I'm convinced we have a new energy system coming. This is really good news. Humans are very good at changing energy. We went from the age of wood. We were burning everything in sight to stay warm and to cook. Mm -hmm. It was an ecological disaster what, hundreds of years ago. Almost all of Northern Europe was deforested. About the time it was all falling apart, the British discovered the rock that burned, coal. In every way, coal was better than wood. Mm -hmm. Well, about the time that we were polluting the sky with that stuff, and uh, it was taking so much coal to get the coal, it wasn't worth it, we went to oil. And you and I have lived through the age of oil mm -hmm. for all these years. Lockheed Martin, and the US Navy, so this is some guy in a garage, have put in for patents on vehicles. They go into space, get to come down through the atmosphere at 22 times the speed of sound. That's fast, without making sonic booms. They go into the ocean and come out, and the vehicle moves like a water bug. First it's there, then it's not. Sometimes I wonder if some of the UFOs we're seeing are us experimenting. <laughs> but if they're filing for patents, they have something. Oil's not fueling that thing. So is it fusion? Is it anti-gravity? Is it the stuff Nikola Tesla talked about 100 years ago? I don't know, but I think we've cracked the code on this. About a year ago, in fact, almost exactly, a retiring Air Force three-star general, pretty legitimate guy, said, we can go anywhere in the world right now in one hour. We can? Sign me up. Beam me uh, up, Scotty. Yeah, I mean, I don't <laughs> sit on an airplane for four hours. Why would he say that? Huh. Think what this means to the kids, to leave the age of oil mm -hmm. and maybe have limitless, hopefully free energy. That's a wonderful thing. So this isn't, a, I don't all seem kind of doom and gloomy, but back to our transition. To get from where we are to where we're going some things are going to go away. One of them has to be the debt. We've already talked about that. So back to our wealth from the earth, wealth from human hands. What you'll find historically is that they don't move together. During times of optimism and creativity and ingenuity, try to get people interested in cotton or lead or tin. What are you talking about, Greg? The new iPhone's coming out. <laughs> get that. What will happen here, though, is all of those good things when pushed to an extreme, you will end up at greed. Whether it's 1929, mm -hmm. flipping houses, dot com, it's what human beings do. Yeah. On this side, it speaks to something also very good in the human makeup. Uh, prudence, discipline, looking ahead, planning forward, conservatism. <laughs> Push that to an extreme you'll end up at abject fear. Guns, gold, groceries, let's wait in the East Mountains for the apocalypse, and both are wrong. But remember we talked about who we are shows up in our money? Right now we're here, we're at the greed part. But fear is starting to trickle in, mm -hmm. and you're starting to see the flow of money come to low tech. Guess who the largest private owner of water rights is in California? The Harvard Endowment. Right, why is an East Coast University buying water rights on the West Coast? Well, who sits on the board of the very prestigious Harvard Endowment? Eh, people from Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Amazon, Google, Microsoft. This is high tech, high finance, and they're buying low-tech water rights. Why would you do that? Because you think you're going to make money on it. That's exactly right. Right. The biggest buyer of gold earlier this year, for I think it was second or third quarter, 
was the Federal Reserve Bank. They bought tons of it. Why is our central bank buying gold? That's not their product. Their product is printing money in digits. What's, what's going on here? Get the largest owner of silver is J.P. Morgan. Physical silver. That's not their product. Their product is loans. Big money has been quietly positioning into low-tech, hard assets, or as I tell clients, things that can't be printed. As we continue to print, as the value of paper dollars becomes suspect, it will be very natural for people to become suspicious of anything papery. Mm -hmm. If you can't trust a paper dollar, how can you trust a bond, which is basically just a promise, it's an IOU, that's paper, an annuity, um, your CD at the bank. Yes, it will still be there, but what will it buy? You can't print gold, you can't print lead, you can't print soybeans, you can't print. Once, what'll, what I think you're going to see is we're going to have the money that's here slosh over to here. And this will go like this. And this will go like this. And at that point, you really do have to be adaptable. Mm. <laughs> you can't fall in love with this either. Mm -hmm. The people who got all into gold back in the 1970s and 80s, well, okay, once the cycle changed, gold went from $35 an ounce to $850, pretty good, to $250, mm -hmm. not so good. Silver went from $2 to $50, back to $3. Oil went from $6 to $38, $39. This is all 70s, 80s, back down to $7. Fortunes made, fortunes lost. Same mm -hmm. over here mm -hmm. with stocks. You'll see it all the time. Right. We run it up, fortunes made, and then boom, down we go. I think the cycle's heading back this way. And so I've been positioning client money in low tech. I think we're right, but you're never sure. Yeah. But anyway, that's that's how I'm thinking. So are we we're we're heading into a beast system? Well sure, scripture says it. So I, I believe it, and you can see the pieces coming together. Now we talked about Fed coin mm -hmm. and how that would be part of it. If you layer in the artificial intelligence piece, th this is the part where it gets pretty interesting if you meld the two. How to do this? The historical problem with command economies Think the old Soviet Union, mm -hmm. where they dictate everything, is it could never respond to the market. They, they would produce all this steel, and they'd send the exact same amounts to Minsk as they would to, say, well, with Stalingrad as to mm -hmm. Leningrad. Right. Well, in America, it never worked like that. If there was a call for steel in Texas, but not in California, the market, boom, sent it to Texas. With artificial intelligence and being able to track everything in not just real time, but actually in predictive time, mm -hmm. they believe they could have a command economy where they control it and control where resources go in a far more efficient way even than the market. And you would have a very elite and controlling group at the top. Mm -hmm. and the rest of us. And if you want to see what COVID has done right now to accelerate this trend, it's remarkable. What, what happened? While we fight here amongst ourselves, the big story is wealth has moved up. While all the little guys have mm -hmm. gotten hammered, mm -hmm. look at Amazon. Look at the wealth of Jeff Bezos. Look mm -hmm. at Home Depot. Look at Lowe's. Look at you the bet. giants. And the suction continues this way. And that's the plan. It's all planned, right. To think that this is just happenstance and mm -hmm. oh well. And then you wonder, why aren't our politicians responding? Why aren't they, oh, I don't know, you get, on it. You get all this money <laughs> from these guys. What are you going to do? Okay, go out there and say, no, no, mm -hmm. no. And this... Yes, this will occur and the social fabric will shred and pretty soon we will be going at it. 
and those at the top smile. Mm -hmm. And this is, it's played out in history like this over and over again. This is not new. It's just more efficient, yeah. <laughs> I'll say that. And it's like taking the blinders off and opening your eyes and really seeing, um, not just listening to the spin, right? but what really is happening. And uh, yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's, it has happened so quickly right. and people have just become sheep. I mean, they just literally just taking this, you know, and sure. just say, okay. That's what Yeshua you know? said. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, Feed we're supposed my sheep. to. Well, yeah, okay. exactly. You know, but I mean, it's like we, we're bowing to idols. Right. We are bowing to idols. Well, and I think if that were the, the maybe the message of today, we will all worship something. Yeah. And, you know, for some people, they worship multiple gods. There are whole societies mm -hmm. that do this. We worship one God. Yes. Some people have come to worship government. Mm -hmm. Some people worship a nation. Exactly. Some people worship skin color. Um, I don't know. Some people worship gurus. But something I think we haven't seen too much of is we've reached a point in our society where we're worshiping ourselves. Yeah. Where we have become our own authority. We have become our own God. Yeah. So if I dare to question you on anything, then you get who attacked. are you to question me? Exactly. Uh, I am my, and if you said this to people, they, they, what they'll say is, well, I don't go to religion. I don't believe in this. I just follow what my heart tells me. Right. Well, the my heart is the cue. Mm -hmm. Ah, so you're worshiping whatever you think is right. And actually the Bible talks about this. You know, people yeah. do what's right in their own eyes. Right. And, and uh, you know, one of the things, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, we're, we're right at the end. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but you know, I, I, I want to say to you, our audience, we need to say, who am I worship? What am I worshiping? And repent. Right. We have got to repent as a nation. And I know it's beginning to happen. I've been a part of groups and that have been coming together, praying and repenting before the Lord. But Yes, you know, we have got to continue that. We've got to lead a lifestyle of repentance. And we've got to keep our eyes and our focus upon Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, of, our Messiah, Messiah of Israel. He's, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he's the one who is the one who truly controls. And, but the thing is, his control is out of love and concern. So get in the Word, study. And Greg, if they uh, need to get in touch with you, they can, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, ZanettiFinancial.com. <laughs> just go on the internet. This wasn't going to be a commercial. No, but I thank know. thank you for but, having me. But I mean, me. yeah. So appreciate you for, so much for sharing with us today. Thank you all for your continued support for Sun Broadcasting. We especially appreciate your prayers. And we want to bless you today. Smile. Be happy. Be filled with the joy of the Lord because that truly is your strength. Shalom, shalom. Your financial support is appreciated. Go to P.O. Box 4338, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87196. Call us today at 505-345-1991 or go to sunbroadcasting.org.